reconvene uh, to an open meeting. Uh, consideration of possible action of items discussed in the closed meeting. Okay, and item number two, uh, we're going to table that. Okay. General management report. We have a couple items, a uh, financial report, and then we have two uh, short uh, Okay, I'm going to be going over the uh, financial performance report as of March 31st, 2012. My name is Andrew Garcia, uh, VP of ECFO. I'm going to just uh, do some highlights uh, on the main uh, categories here. Under gross revenues here, through uh, the end of March, uh, BB has uh, collected or recorded $82,186,044 in gross revenues. Adjusted gross revenues after banking out fuel and wholesale and, and southmost uh, requirements uh, totaled 57 million 173,245. This is the uh, the basis for calculating the 10 percent uh, transfer to the city, which as of March is 5 million 717,325. Uh, total requirements, including O&M and debt service, uh, are at 39 million 744,662, leaving a balance to surplus of 15 million 394,60 dollars, of which uh, 3,682,802 is uh, the net cash transfer to the city, leaving 11,711,258 for PUB uh, use, of which 5,385 has uh, gone against our 10,771 annual uh, CIP funding uh, budget, and uh, leaving a, a surplus in the improvement uh, fund of 6,325,342. When we compare um, actuals uh, year to date through for with budget and prior year, our gross revenues uh, are over budgeted revenues by 4.1 million, and over last year actuals through March by 2.1 million, 57 versus 53.1 and 55.1. Fuel and energy costs are about 6.2 below budget and 22 and a half million versus 28, and slightly higher, 800,000 more than last year. O&M expenses at 27.6 fall 4.3 million below budgeted uh, levels of 31.9 and slightly higher uh, 1.8 million uh, compared to 2011 actuals. On the, uh, on the sales side, electric sales uh, continue to be uh, over 2011 uh, levels through the year to date and March 31st by 14,693,310 kWh what hours or 2.6 percent and you can see here where we uh, pretty much follow the same line as our five-year average and, and slightly over sometimes under the uh, the uh, 2011 we, we were kind of in line with the actual 2011 for the month of march water continues to exceed 2011 uh, levels by 2.7 percent uh, we did see uh, uh, consumption of water in the early months exceeding 2011 uh, but from December through uh, through uh, March, have seen a, a, a drop and, and lower levels than last year. Uh, same thing on the wastewater. Uh, we, we're still ahead by 1.5 percent, but uh, between December and, and March, have seen a, a downward trend. On the thousand kWh electric sales uh, customer. Uh, comparing here to other local IOUs, uh, our average bill of 86.83 is the lowest uh, of all the 13 uh, utilities shown here. Next in line would be Amigo at 88.15. Um, overall, we have um, nine utilities over $100 uh, average monthly bill and four over $100. Uh, on the previous 12 months comparison, uh, you'll see that uh, our, our ours is, is the lowest as well, 92.64 versus the next lowest is the Amigo at 94.07. Uh, quite a few of them, well over $100 per month average. Compared to other municipal utilities, uh, pretty much in line with, with all of them, we have a few uh, falling below PUB, a few uh, over, but pretty much all within the same range. 
That concludes my financial performance report. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, as you're aware, we received the, a grant for $24.5 million about a week ago, and I thought it was a good time to give you an update on the grants that we have received in the last few years. This is a list of the current grants that we are still working on uh, at this time. The Bronzeville Robindale project, uh, we received grants uh, between 2001 to 2009 for $15,837,002. Uh, uh, the ERA projects, $46 million, and the FM511802 Colonial projects, which is the, the recent uh, grant for $24.5 million, for a total of $86 million. About to 86 and a half, um, and I'll be talking about the, each individual project in the next few slides. The bottom part is the Salmos Regional Water Authority microfiltration project. That one is a loan, and I'll explain why I added that um, on the list for $13 million. The Robindale Wastewater Treatment <coughs> Plant, this is funding that was provided for improvements to the Robindale plant, which were needed to comply with federal regulations. This is uh, grants that we've received from 2001 to 2009 through the Environmental Protection Agency, EPA. There were uh, federal appropriations. This was money that was um, provided for the Weir project and that were later transferred to the Robindale project. The American Recovery and Reinvestment Act, the ERA projects, $46 million. These were funds allocated for 13 different projects. There's a, we still have some under construction. And this was to replace 30 miles of uh, gravity sewer lines, um, lines uh, between 8 and 30 inches in diameter, to rehabilitate seven lift stations and to remove 11 lift stations from the system. And this was a grant. Uh, that was given to us uh, in 2009, Texas Development, Texas Water Development Board. And this is the $24.5 million grant that we just received for the 511802 project. This is a Colonia project. Funding provides first time sewer services to economically distressed areas. Again, this is a Texas Water Development Board grant. <coughs> The South Coast Regional Water Authority Microfiltration Project, this is a, a loan for $13 million, and this is funding that will provide removal of arsenic and iron from brackish water in order to comply with the new federal regulations. And it's also gonna increase the plant capacity from seven and a half million gallons per day to about 11 million gallons per day. And the reason why I added this to the list is in order to get these uh, type of loans you have to go through the process and apply for grants. And then the Texas Water Development Board prioritizes based on the funding that they have. And then after they um, finish with the grant money that they have, the funding, they go um, and make a list of all the, the different loans that they can um, provide. And this was divided into two different loans, one for 9.2 million, it's a disadvantaged community program and it's a low interest loan. And then the other part is 3.7 million and it's a low interest loan. It varies from 0.10% to 4.25%. Now these are the projects that we've completed through the grant funding, um, the desalination pilot plant project, the Vallehermoso Valle Escondido project, uh, Vallehermoso hookups, uh, with ORCA grants, 511802, the design part, and the PUB and Laguna Madre grant. Um, and I apologize for the numbers they, they <coughs> made. Uh, it's a total of 8.2 million. 
The desalination pilot plant project, this was the plant that was at the port for $1.3 million. Uh, this provided a pilot desalination plant which uh, filters salt water to portable water. Again, Texas Water Development Board grant, and we received that in 2007. Projects completed. By Hermoso Valle Escondido project, uh, this is funding that we received and it provided first time sewer services to colonial areas and as you can see we had to divide the project in, in six different places in order to complete it. Uh, the funding was not there at the time and we received funding between 2001 to 2010 in order to complete the project. The grants came in from Texas Water Development Board Economically Distressed Areas Program, the EDAP, and the Texas Department of Rural Affairs. That project is also completed. And then we received $405,000 for first-time sewer services, again, on the colonias, and this is for the hookups uh, from the main line to the, to the homes, so, be, to, so the customers wouldn't have to pay for, for that. And this is uh, an ORCA grant. FM 511-802, this was for the actual design of the project uh, we just received funding for through the Texas Water Development Board. And the Brunswick PUP and Laguna Madre uh, grant, this is a $60,000 grant. Uh, we partner with them uh, for research and planning for seawater desalination uh, plant. And again, this is a Texas Water Development Board grant. These are a list of projects for grant applications that we just submitted through the Hazard Mis uh, Mitigation Grant Program. This is through the Texas Department of Public Safety. They're the, the state uh, partners through, uh, and this is a FEMA uh, grant. We've applied for all these different grants and they total of 12, about $12 million. We're still waiting for a response on those. We just applied for, for those uh, grants about two months ago. This is a list of Texas Water Development Board grant applications that we have submitted. Uh, the project information form was submitted about a month or two ago. We're still pending the IUP, the, the, the plan that, that's uh, given by Texas Water Development Board. It's actually the ranking and then they invite us to uh, either their grants or loans. At the time when they, uh, they, they rank the projects, they let us know whether we um, can either get grants or loans. And at that time, usually if, if they're loans, we decline, and then we submit those uh, projects again the following year for grants. And this is all the, the list of the projects, and they total about $78 million. Uh, again, we're, wait, we're waiting on them on the ranking on these and the invitation. We should know by the end of uh, the summer. So the summary, uh, the grant awards uh, the, from the completed projects and the current projects, they total about $95 million, and then the $13 million for the loan. Any questions? excellent job you're doing with constantly getting out there the, 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 the applications and all the process which is a long process for each grant right. process and I'd like to commend the administration and also your, your, your team and everybody that's involved with the grant writing. It's a lot of different departments that get together and um, it's, a, it's a big effort. Yes I've learned. <laughs> I've met a lot of your writers. Any comments? Uh, as far as, uh, like Dr. Morales uh, said, uh, commend your all staff for all the grant applications uh, that we've received. Is there any other opportunities for maybe collab collaborating with other grants, like with the city, and kind of integrating some opportunities there? Yes, actually, we've talked to their grant writers, and they've been sending emails whenever they see an opportunity. Um, we are going to be applying for one grant that's for the Risaka project. It's due July 27, so we are already working with um, Ambiotech on, on that project to be able to submit that project. So.
This is an update on the water meter replacement project and leak detection. Some background, uh, the water system, we have 624 miles of water lines, about 47,000 water accounts. We produce about 8.6 billion gallons of water per year, and we sell about 7.5 billion. A water audit, that's an assessment of the distribution metering and, and accounting operations using, using accounting principles to determine how much water is being lost in the system and where uh, we're losing that water. Water losses usually come from inaccurate and fail meters, system leakage, um, theft of service, inaccuracies in billing and uh, record keeping. The standard for Texas on water losses, there are about 10 to 15 percent. Most utilities are higher than that due to all the infrastructure and uh, limited funding. As the water meter, as the water infrastructure ages, the loss of treated water in the distribution system increases, and the water audits are an important water conservation uh, tool that uh, all utilities use. Back in 2003, the Texas House Bill 3338 requires that all the water utilities perform water loss audits every five years, and the program is um, implemented by Texas Water Development Board. PUB's first water system was audited. Uh, it was conducted, the, the audit was conducted in 1993, and we had water losses greater than 30 percent. Back in 2007, uh, JBS performed a water audit, and the findings from that water audit were that annual water production at water plants increased as, at a greater pace than meter sales. Obviously, we had uh, water losses, and there were about 21.5 percent. Recommendations were to implement leak detection program to test the water plant production meters for accuracy, and to implement large meter testing program as well as a meter replacement program. Between 2007 and 2009, we implemented uh, some of those audit recommendations, and what we found out was that the leak detection program we were testing about, we were surveying about 36 to 60 miles per year, and if uh, you remember from a previous um, slide, we have about 600, over 600 miles, so we were not doing much to the system. Water plant production meters, we had difficulty in testing for accuracy, and then one of the production meters uh, was estimated to be 14% off calibration. Meter replacement program, we were replacing about 2,500 meters per year, which was only about 5% of the inventory. And then the water losses remained high and they were increasing. And so we decided to develop an action plan for 2010. We figured we needed to be more aggressive. So the 2010 action plan was, um, to contract JBS again and come and update a water audit after um, we accelerated the meter replacement pro uh, program with uh, contract services. So in January 2010, the board approved to purchase an additional 12,628 meters, and we contracted RG3 utilities to come and help us install those meters. And we also contracted the leak detection services in August of 2010. And we were going to replace the production meters at water plant one and two. These are some pictures of the production meters at the plants. The one on the left is the 1994 production meter that we had at one of the plants, and we replaced it back in 2010. So you can see there, uh, it's a pretty big task to replace these uh, meters. This is a meter testing program that we have. Uh, we're replacing, uh, we're testing water meters over three inches or larger uh, annually. And you can see it takes about four people to, to test these meters. It's, so it's a big task. The water meter replacement phase one uh, project, uh, RG3 came in and replaced 10,314 water meters. These were meters that were 12 years and older. PUB crews replaced about 2,300 water meters, again, 12 years and older. And then uh, PUB tested the removed uh, meters for accuracy to determine the potential impact, and we found out that uh, the meters were inaccurate about 10%. And we were we were estimated that we were losing about seven, 70 million gallons per year. 
This is a graph showing the total meters that have been replaced over the years between 2005 and 2010. So as you can see, the numbers uh, that we were replacing were not uh, that, that many meters. So 2010, you can see the 12,945 meters that were replaced. The leak detection program, uh, the company surveyed 214 miles of water mains and we found 39 leaks um, throughout the system and we figured we were lo uh, losing about 29 million gallons of water. Now these are uh, leaks that you can't really see. They're about, some, some of them are about three feet um, underground. You can't really see them and if there's a drain ditch next to it, the water might be going through the drain ditch or you can't really see the leak until it's already uh, really bad or if it's under a pavement, they could have cave-ins and so it's not easily detected. This is one of those uh, leaks that we had. Again, you could see where it's been excavated and that's uh, where we found the, the leak. In uh, 2011, we decided to hire the JVS and to update the 2007 water audit. It was finished in uh, February 2011. Findings, uh, due to the proactive initiative conducted by PUB, the water loss was reduced approximately from 24% to about 12% by January 2011. The water production decreased while the sales increased. And the recommendations were basically to continue with uh, what we were doing at a faster pace so we decided to do the phase two meter replacement program. So the action plan for 2011-2012 again was to um, do the second phase of the meter replacement program, continue with the leak detection services and survey 200 miles of those water lines. Right now uh, we are working on the bid, uh, the bid documentation. It's projected to bid in uh, late 2012. Hopefully we'll do the contract award by uh, early 2013. We're also gonna be testing the production meters that were installed back in 2010. The water meter replacement uh, project, phase two, right now it's underway. Number of water meters re replaced, 11,470. Uh, that's the total for the contract. Right now we've replaced 6,100 more or less uh, from uh, RG3 utilities. PUB staff has replaced about 2,200 water meters. We're still pending about 3,000, and we continue with the project probably within the next uh, month or two. This is the annual losses that we had from 2008 to 2011. You could see from 22 to about 11.5 percent, so you're already seeing the difference. Then the next uh, line is the three months for 2012 at 11.9 percent. So we went back from uh, April 2011 to March 2012, the last 12 months, and it's looking like it's going down to about 10.6 percent. Once we finish with the second phase, we're gonna have to wait about another year and it'll probably go down another percent or two. As far as revenue, uh, the top uh, graph is the water <coughs> revenue, the middle one is the waste, uh, wastewater revenue, and the third one is the combined. You could see from uh, 2008, it was about 20 million on the water, about 20 <coughs> million on uh, 2009, it went down 2010, it went up 2011, about three million, um, and overall the combined went up from 2010 to 2011 about five million dollars. So we're hoping that once we finish the second phase, um, that will increase. And that concludes the, the presentation. Thank you. Is there any questions? I have a question. Do you also replace the meters for the abyssus? Yes, all meters. Those are the ones that bring in the most revenue. Are we looking into like, do you have like electronic meters or something that the banks were looking at? The smart meters? The smart meters, the AMI, um, I think that's more on the electrical side at this time. The, uh, the meters that we're replacing or the residential use have a feature on them where you can put a transducer for the future use on AMI. That's, that's an attachment that can be ordered there. At least the base and the mirror are capable of sending a signal that can be brought into the Yeah, I remember we, they, they did a presentation. We had a presentation on that. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Yeah. Yes. Uh, and I'm 
sorry, maybe this doesn't go over this report, but on the operational report, there's differences between hoist pumps from the Rio Grande into reservoirs and then from reservoirs into the water plants, and there's differences there also. Mm -hmm. That's not part of this audit? It's not because that's raw water. A lot of that water goes into the resacas and they're not metered. Okay. So the, the, what's metered is what goes from the water plants into the sales. What's already treated. So that water, the difference is that it's pumped. It's, 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 it's just, just for our information, but it's not really metered. Okay. <clears throat> we have close to 1,000 customers. We replaced a little, probably about 11,000 units right now. The second phase. The second phase. Mm -hmm. So when will this project, you know, when do you think it will be Well, the, the first phase was 12. 12 years and older uh, meters. The second phase, they're newer mm -hmm. meters. And then as we're gonna have to wait a few years and then replace another bunch because the, the <coughs> new meters, they usually last about five to 10 years depending on, uh, we have to test them. So um, again, with the second phase, it will be about half of the, the meters that have already been replaced. So we'll just uh, wait another few years and then do another phase. Any other questions? No? Okay. Thank you, DJ. Appreciate it. Um, I'm going to, uh, I know item number, item number four was saying. Yeah, that's But right. we're, I'm going to go ahead and uh, move up item number 10 okay. to next, uh, be next, which is uh, consideration of number 1110. Consideration approval for resolution awarding contracts to three equipment vendors to enable the Brownsville PUB to pursue dredging and dewatering of solids up to several resacas within the city of Brownsville, appropriating funds and authorizing contract execution in support thereof. Mr. Bruzak. Mr. Chairman, we did have a workshop earlier tonight on the Resaca project. Uh, this resolution provides for the award of the contracts to the three equipment vendors that were here for dredging and dewatering. I did provide a, a backup resolution Friday that had the pricing in it, that you all should have got to replace the one in your packet. Yes. Uh, an appropriation of funds totaling $5,460,898 was hereby requested uh, by this resolution for the implementation of the Rosaka Project Part 1, equipment purchasing, department inventory, maintenance, and operator training components as discussed. I just want to say on that five million four sixty, we do have two million available from prior appropriations, and then on item twelve, we'll be doing another budget amendment to support the, uh, the difference. Thank you. Is there a motion. There's a motion uh, to approve the uh, BVSAP recommendation. Motion by Mr. Fayez. Second. Second by Mr. Nakano. Uh, discussion. No. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Brownsville Almost Endowed Scholarship Program. Mr. Bruziak. Uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, I'm asking this item to be tabled at the request of UTV. Uh, is there a motion? Second. Second. Motion, Mr. Garcia. Second by Mr. Vasquez. Uh, any discussion? No. Motion carried. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Item number five, consideration and approval of a sponsorship for Salute to Freedom Fourth of July celebration, City of Brownsville. Mr. Chair, members of the board, Larry Jopel could not attend tonight. He did send a letter that's in your packet uh, requesting a $3,000 sponsorship for the Salute to Freedom July Fourth celebration in the City of Brownsville. And he's asking the board to consider that request or any amount thereof that uh, the board sees fit to help with that celebration. It is a citywide event, 4th of July. 
It's a 4th of July event at the ITEC building uh, in the Mingland Mall or in the Mingland area. I don't know if you all want to uh, move forward with it or, or discuss it. Or, I make a motion to approve the request for $3,000. Which party has a motion? Or is there a second? Second. second, Mr. Garcia. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, motion carries. Item number six, consideration of approval of a sponsorship request from the Brownsville Society of Performing Arts. Uh, Mr. Chairman, the board of the Brownsville Society of Performing Arts is requesting a sponsorship for promoting Latin dance culture and arts in Brownsville. There's information in your packet. Uh, I would say if you want to consider a sponsorship for the uh, Brownsville Society of Performing Arts and not the individual that requested it, so there can be a sponsorship. And I'm not sure if there's anyone here from. Yes. Please come up. Hi, this is Omar Ropesa. Oh. Uh, this is a, a request for a sponsorship for funding. Uh, I got the BSPA as an umbrella, a nonprofit umbrella organization. This is a Latin dance company. We actually it's a, a group of uh, teenagers aging from seven to twelve years old. It is, these are schools from elementary to junior high, and basically we're promoting this this improve trying to improve the quality of life through through the performing arts. Uh, right now, we went to a state uh, performing stages at a state level, and right now we're trying to uh, represent Brownsville there uh, in, uh, in the Rio Grande Valley and actually the state of Texas at the Puerto Rico uh, stages. So, right. From what I understand is that you went to the state level and then they invited you. Exactly. To the Based on, on our, we got a standing ovation. Actually, our our uh, short term goal was into the state, but. We, we didn't expect that well, to perform that well, but actually now we're into the rush thing and that's what we're trying to knock indoors so we can get funding for this, promoting the, the culture event through the kids. And it's actually these little kids are putting all their time and effort and also their parents to actually try to get something to mark the map that Brunswick is here. And I actually I'm trying to even have the, if this goes through, like having the PUB as the main the main sponsor of the, this team and having actual in every single stage promoting the, the PUB as the main sponsor of the of this board because actually this is a it goes to the community it's back to the community because we're trying to get these kids to ex be exposed to every single stage here. Thank you. Thank you very much. Dr. Uh, what is the total cost for your trip? Right, right now we're trying to get the, the, the flights it's, it's five hundred dollars the the flag for the kids. Obviously, uh, parents have one parent, one chaperone has to go. So uh, parents are expecting like around. we I adjusted to fifteen hundred dollars per uh, performer. I, my 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 team has around ten ten to nine kids performing. So it's just in adding out. We have been looking for uh, uh, knocking doors for fundraisers and sponsorship. We're trying to find from everywhere. Uh, right, right now we're trying to to, to have the, the main one because I want to really move forward. We're trying to f find a sponsor for five thousand dollars to get all the the flags, the flags, uh, and the, and that way we can actually put the, all the 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 logo of the PUB of the community in all their promotional items, poster, banners. I work for the I, I, I volunteer for the BSPA and the Latin Jazz Festival. That's the main event here in our community as a for the performing arts. So that that will be recognized to the to the actual event that PUB is there. Also, I mean any contribution will be greatly appreciated. We um, I try to create a package for a packages. If five thousand would be like the ideal, but if you consider twenty five hundred just to get some some funding just for help for actual parents that'll be really appreciated thank you, thank you. Appreciate it. congratulations thank you.
there a motion? Table or is there a discussion question? Yeah, I'll make a motion to go with the silver sponsorship of the department of health. I second it. Motion is from that guy, second by Mr. Farias. Any questions? Oh, yes. Is that would be to award it to the Roswell Society of Performing Arts and asking them to yes to supervise officials to this project. That's the way it should be done. Yes. Okay. Yeah. The motion is you want to read out the motion. The motion is to is to do a silver sponsorship level to the Roswell Society of Performing Arts to support the this particular project, the Flower Dance project. Yes, uh, this presentation will satisfy the requirements of the Public Funds Investment Act. Uh, I'm just going to do a three-page overview. Uh, on this first page, our yield summary as of March 31st. Uh, we can see here that the subtotal for all agencies at 38 million uh, 587 uh, represent 23 percent of our portfolio and are yielding uh, between uh, 51 basis points or 0.51 percent and 113 with various maturities here on those uh, uh, agencies. Uh, with Wells Fargo, we had 16 million 320 on deposit or 10 percent, yielding uh, 1 percent. And this is pursuant to our depository bank agreement and our earnings credit rate. Uh, with the various pools, uh, 50 percent share, 80 million 292, uh, sharing a very low uh, earnings here between 10 basis points and, and 31 basis points for, for some uh, commercial paper here within this Texas term uh, pool. Uh, we still maintain uh, some monies with uh, Frost Bank under the CDARS program, 1%, uh, 2,009,861 here, earning 48 basis points. And on, in our money market uh, uh, funds, we have 24,875,474 or 15% uh, uh, there, uh, earning 21 basis points. Our overall uh, portfolio. Uh, is earning uh, 41 basis points, 162 million here. Uh, the share of the different instrument types is, is reflected here on this pie chart, 50% in investment pools, 1% in, in CDs, 10% uh, in with our bank uh, depository uh, accounts, money market 16% and agency securities 23%. Uh, overall, our, our, our portfolio, as I mentioned, is earning 41 basis points, uh, uh, quite, quite uh, well above the S&P uh, government investment pool uh, index here in the blue line. That concludes my report. Any questions? Thank you, Mr. Garcia. Any questions? When are you going to start getting 4% again? <laughs> 2015. <laughs> August 2015. <laughs> Write it down. Uh, item number eight. Consideration of approval of bid award for annual janitorial services. Mr. Garcia. Yes, sir. I'm going to have Diane Solitaire here come up and, and explain uh, the, the process we undertook in trying to secure a, a cleaning services for the sites outside of this facility. locations. The invitation to bid was advertised in the Brownsville Herald on February 12th and 19th and was emailed to 15 vendors with two responding. The two vendors that responded were United Cleaning Services and Nunez Cleaning. The janitorial services include the following areas, the SCADA building, purchasing warehouse office, electrical overhead, inspectors building, water and wastewater construction offices, substation office, underground and meter shop, fleet management, 
uh, offices, analytical lab building, crew building, dispatch, and energy control room, baseball park, restrooms, PCB storage building, analytical lab, mechanical room, security guard shed, water plant one and two, Robindale, uh, the north and south treatment plants, the pre-treatment office, lift station, and Palo Alto control center. Both vendors who responded provide janitorial services to PUB. United Cleaning Services provides services on a monthly month basis for 15 areas located around the PUB warehouse yard. The services provided have been unsatisfactory. Nunez Cleaning currently has an annual contract to provide services to seven remote PUB areas. They have provided excellent service. The term of the contract will be from June 1st, 2012 through May 31st, 2013. Salter, I, I have a few questions myself. Okay. On, uh, you're on UCS. You say the, how long have they worked for us, UCS? We've had UCS for, I want to say the last five or six years. Four. Four? Four or five years. Four or five years? And uh, they, I mean, doing, that's what they do, they do cleaning, right? How come just now, or are they just all of a sudden sort of bad service, or? Well, Hector is the one that usually walks through with them. They do a walkthrough quarterly, or they were doing when we had the contract. Right now we're on a month-to-month -month basis with them. So Hector usually walks with them to all the areas to let them know where the services need to be improved, and um, they Hector, haven't. Is Hector here? Hector, no, I don't think he's here today. But because it, it just it concerns me because she, they worked for us for five years and just now you know before they were doing well and then all of a sudden they drop off. Okay, and, and although Hector's not here, we did attach a, a table of summary of feedback from different sites, and and we're relying on, on that customer you know uh, at the different sites and, and their satisfaction level and uh, unfortunately most of them uh, have highlighted uh, some areas of deficiencies. And, and that I understand Hector has brought to their attention, but uh, here we are trying to, to secure a new contract and we're having to, to decide what, how we're going to move forward. I would have liked to see some documentation, but I did not uh, the plus for the minus of the companies. I don't see any of that here. I mean, because saying that they did a satisfactory job or an unsatisfactory job, there's no documentation. It's been over there. Documentation. Well, uh, Walkthroughs on this day, we were told you you can find this, oh. that, and the other. But I don't see any type of We're relying on, on the on the on the users and the facility, the other customers, to, to have something. Uh, we just collected the feedback as a survey type of approach. We'd like to they probably have some type of documentation. But we can we can uh, try to secure that uh, more specifics from the the, the customers uh, that that have provided the feedback. Uh, doesn't the contract state that there's going to be no inadequate work or whatever, and, uh, you know, on the yes, contract? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, but is there any reprimands as far as the letters and files where you, you know, reprimand them, give them written warning? Do we have to? Do the vendors, the yeah, written warning? Yeah, unless Hector has something on file, we don't. So I think we should, you know, when something like this happens, I would imagine you would reprimand them, give them a letter, give them a written notice, and then they just have the same. We've been on a month to month, and, and they've just been, you know, waiting for this process to, to get underway and recommend uh, the, the somebody they feel can provide a better quality service. But uh, I, I'm sure behind the doors, some some talking has happened between our staff and, and the provider. And, and another question I have is, uh, we, we sent out for 15, or the email, I'm sorry, I didn't see that, Gmail 15 vendor. And we invited. He invited. And but only two responded. And do we know if they get these emails? I mean, we, we actually called. Oh, you called. I called them and, and asked them if they're interested in bidding. I get all their information, their email. So it is the correct email address. So I know that they're going to get it. Is there something in our request that is keeping them from bidding? Well, it could be the the bonds or the insurance. It's usually that with the smaller vendors, they are not able to provide bonds or insurance requirements. And so I, I guess, uh, I don't know, a couple of years ago, I brought up this point that when you have small contracts, you know, maybe we should consider waiving the bond to 
generals that said might be prohibiting some people in bidding, especially under small contracts. Well, on bonds, I, I can't waive that. That's a state That's, that's a state, a state requirement? Yeah. Usually, yeah. if it's over 50000 we, right. we have to comply with the state. Is it put out a performance bond or what? Uh, payment, if it's over 50000 it's a payment bond. If it's over 100000 it's uh, the performance bond. One of the one of the dilemmas we're facing is, is, is and, and I'll turn it over to legal counsel, but we, we'd like to get the lowest bid, but based on input from from internal staff, we want to get the, the better quality service, you know, that they that we're paying for, even though the cost may be a, a little higher. So we're we're in that dilemma where you know are we entitled are we obligated to get the lowest bid, and and, yeah, and try to work out the quality or paying for service that's not getting done. If I Y'all want to feel comfortable in that area as to the lowest bid quality, best qualified. You know, we can, we you know, can. My concern is, you know, what I stress is, you know, write them, write them, down, you know, write them down, date, and, and that way you have the documentation, like Mr. Vasquez said, where you can come back and say, you know, set some state, you know, do that before. I, no, I, I, have, I have the problem that the paper you the chart you gave us states that United Kingdom has operated. Given services from 2009 to 2012, 2012. And the other company, Nunez, is from 2010 to 12, 2012. Since when are you documenting or, or saying this is going to happen? From, are you also including items in 2010, 2009, 2011, or this recent? Or when are these things happening? Nunez just recently started doing outside the area here. They've done the pre treatment. Robindale, we've done small informal bids for those remote areas, and we're trying to put everything together into one <coughs> one contract, so they do all the janitorial. They, Munoz just started doing a cleaning in October, and that's when we don't have anything prior to that. So, so the survey was conducted on March 8th? Yes. Let me add one thing. If, if, if you table it, um, it'll also give you an opportunity to get staff, because that's, that's another area of concern we had, besides the, the documentation, was does, does, does the 40000 that bid, represent uh, realistically, based on the sites, the cycles, the weekly, the hours, a, a realistic cost? And, and at surface, staff told me it doesn't. But I won't bring out an analysis that shows, you know. At seventy thousand, it doesn't. No, at forty thousand. Oh, at forty thousand, you know, uh, th th we have quite a few cycles within within the week that week, and the different size. And and when you do a little bit of math, you know, can can you actually expect the quality of service and, and the hourly rates to the employees and all that cleaning and materials and all that? I can let staff uh, do do some analysis on that, and 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 then. Uh, you know, assist with the uh, with the decision making. Which I thought that you already did with the survey. 
Well, the survey was just on the quality, you know, the customer satisfaction. Uh, the, the dollars and, and the cycles and the sites is a different thing. And, and the numbers on the surface don't add. But okay, there's a motion on the table. It's a new motion. No, no, no. I made the motion. Yeah, so it's well, but you have no the change of motion because you worded it wrong. Correct? Right? No, I mean, mean, that's what Mr. Rodriguez said. No? No. no. He was right? He was just clarifying. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. So. Yeah, he made the motion that's, that's, that's listed as recommended. the recommended action that includes the language the most responsible bit. Okay, then we had second one, Mr. Right. Garcia. And then we had this question. You yeah. have nay, nay, and then a nay. And then you both said nay, yeah. nay, and a nay. And then I made a motion. Then but, we don't, the, but you had two nays, we don't know oh, okay. whether or not. You have two box, two yeses, two nays, and it's up to you to decide which way you want to go. Somebody <laughs> <laughs> so that's okay. That's a name. Okay, then make a motion. I make a motion that we, uh, you know, get, you know, uh, document changes to support that they weren't doing the job. And, and another thing, Andy, uh, also, let's try to see if we can get two more, you know, uh, two more people to bid uh, and see if we can get some more bidders in there. And, 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 uh, okay, so that's not a motion. That's not a motion. That's just something. Okay, that's a rejected bid. Yes. Yeah. 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 If we're going to reject, we're going to we're going to continue on month to month with the current providers. Yeah, you'll have to continue month to month. Uh, any other discussion? The motion was to reject. To reject, and he's going to rebid it out. Reject and rebid. Rebid in the meantime. We reject and rebid. We're on a month to month basis. Well, could you rebid it out within the next thirty days? Yes, we can. Okay. Maybe <coughs> that's my motion. Okay. The motion on the floor to reject. The bids and ask for a rebid. And ask for a rebid. And it was a second on Mr. Roskins. All, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Are you all in favor? Yes. Yes, motion carries. Okay. Um, item number nine consideration approval of the Brazil PUB policies and procedures policy. Uh, Emilia Guerra and Lucila Lucia Fernandez. Chairman, members of the board, the Brownsville PB staff is seeking approval of the policies and procedures policy. Currently, our issue is that we have core level written policies and procedures. We also have some outdated or no written operational policies and procedures. And uh, within your handouts, we gave you a copy of the presentation and we also gave you a, a list of our current uh, written policies and procedures we have with, within the company. For example, in, in uh, my division, we do have some core level written policies and procedures. For example, our open records and access policy and our marketing sponsorship and policies and procedures. We do have, on, on the operational side, on our policy and procedures, we do have an outdated collections for damages to PB prop property procedures. What we need is a structure for establishing and writing policies and procedures and standards and guidelines. In order to set that goal, what we did is we developed an ad hoc committee and to develop a, pol a policy on policies and procedures. On that ad hoc team was myself, Emilia Guerra, our human resources director, Nancy Teo, our records manager, Marisa Gaitan, uh, our organizational development uh, administrator, Hugo Blanco, our training coordinator, and Mary Gamboa, our HR assistant. We are assisted by Cindy Bryant with HR Solutions and Design. We met with uh, Ms. Bryant for a day. She guided us through the, through the process, and afterwards, 
We had several meetings, the team met several times to finish uh, our, our policies and procedures. We did submit our draft to executive management and to internal audit. They made some comments and recommendations and those were incorporated into the, into the draft. The purpose of this policy and procedures is to establish standards to all policies and procedures written at PUB. <coughs> it is a very comprehensive policy and it includes uh, standards for writing, reviewing. Uh, those are the list here are the different uh, sections of the, of the policy itself. It includes approving, even, even training. And it applies to all employees and it is the absolute authority for the publications of PUB policies and procedures. And also, within the policy, our records management department will be, play a key role in guiding our employees how to implement the policies and procedures. And organizational development department will provide the training. The benefits for our, a standardized policy procedures is that for employees, it creates a baseline and sets clear boundaries. It, it also enables employees and management to understand responsibilities and also addresses our audit concerns. I think when we've had audits done of some of our operational functions, our auditor has, has expressed some concerns about not having written policies and procedures. Our plan to implement the policies and procedures is we're going to start with training and the organizational development department will provide training to our management. And our management itself will decide on, uh, will participate and decide on compliance. Basically, we will start with our core policies and procedures and then also start working on operational policy and procedures, whether they need to be written or updated. Uh, for example, in, in my division, we do have our records access policy and procedures and the marketing one that I mentioned before, and those need to be uh, updated using the, the standard the standards that we're going to have and the board approves them. And with some of them we'll need to update, in some cases we'll need to actually write policies and procedures. Uh, we did meet with the board audit committee and Emilia Guerra, our HR director, is the one who did the presentation on May 11th. And we pre presented the draft to the, to the, the committee for review. What I have given you in the handout that you got uh, that uh, Ms. Dale uh, passed out to you, we did incorporate some recommendations by the committee members. And there are, they are on page eight, if you'd like to go to page eight of the draft that, that we, Ms. Dale provided you. We included on approvals that the board will approve all policies and policy procedures documents. And we also added that the executive management and senior management will decide on the levels of approval for procedure documents. So the board will have approval for all policies. And towards the bottom of the page, uh, we also included on distributing of documents. The committee also asked that uh, the procedures will be approved by executive management, but they also want the board to receive copies of those. So we added that in, the, in that section as well. It's on page eight, and the sections that were added are underlined. And I think they're also, we have a little, uh, n uh, red tag there, so you can see what page it is. So we have incorporated those uh, recommendations that the committee uh, recom uh, suggested to us. Our next step is to get, uh, to we seek approval by the board of directors. Once we get approval, well, we does require signatures. That will be our, our, our first, uh, policy written under these standards and we'll, we'll need uh, uh, signatures on that policy and we can get started with the, with the training once the board approves our, our policy procedures. Do you have any questions? Yes, Mr. Uh, Lucy and Leandro, uh, I guess from, you know, policies or procedures are good to give direction, guidance and control. Uh, my concern is not to create so much policies and procedures that become bureaucratic, right? Uh, that we have to be efficient in our business practices and make sure that we have common sense on how we approach our, the business day-to-day -day operation. My concern is more from a risk management. You know, how much uh, of this policies or procedures are geared to uh, managing risk 
you know, because if you're not doing a certain policies and procedures of watching your cash, and then you wind up with a cash shortage of, you know, 100,000, then to me that's more important than writing the policy and procedures of something that doesn't have as much risk, right? right. So I'm just wondering how you all are gonna balance that, that risk management part of, of this controls. That's where the core policies and procedures come in place. And we do have some on, on the list that, you, that we provided you. And each uh, department or each function will identify those. For example, Amelia has already identified her personnel policy. The, they're not hers, but our PUV's personnel policies and procedures. She's going to work on those to update them and incorporate into our new, uh, our new standards. So again, uh, Leandro will, will be doing the same thing within his division. And you have our customer service doing the thing. And we're going to focus on the score first. And then the secondary is the operational. That Those are the ones that you usually see when uh, our auditor does an audit. You'll see her results uh, indicate that we have no written policies and procedures. For example, in the, in the case of my department, she did an audit on our collection uh, for damages to be PV property. And we had some policies and procedures, but they were outdated. We, we put them together some years ago, but as we've changed, we never updated them. So we'll work on those secondary. So, so on that particular item where, you know, you identify the risk as potential lawsuits or something out there, I just want to be able to, as a board member, in picking a policy and procedure, what's the reason for this policy and procedure, you know, from a risk perspective, right. you know? And we can, we can do an internal or coordinate an internal uh, assessment vulnerability mm -hmm. type of test. Uh, assessment with, with the managers and directors and, and have uh, some type of guidance from the internal auditor right. and the executive team. But uh, definitely we can approach it from a vulnerability <coughs> assessment, which, which is what most companies do to, to prioritize the, the highest risk. Right, because I just say that there's going to be a lot of work, and I, I, I prefer that you all work on the areas where right. we have the most risk <coughs> as opposed to the opposite. We, we don't necessarily have to address it in this policy, but we can approach it from that. That, that's, that would be from the management part, from the directors. They need to decide on which ones to work on first, and it has to do with risk. You know, for example, again, in my department, we have the sponsorship, we have the open records, we have records management, we also have safety policies and procedures. Those are the ones we need to work on first and standardize them. Because right now, if you look, if we give you a hand, handout with all of them, you, they're all different. They don't use the same standard, and we need to standardize them so you see them. You know, it's a PUB. But I understand uh, that as far as what needs to be first, and right. I'm just saying the priority should be most from a risk right. uh, yes. you know, perspective. Because if not, then you're going to do all this work, and I'll just hate for you all to do all this work, and you're not addressing right. the main areas that need to be looked at. That's right. right. There, there is some standard uh, criteria for assessing risk, you know, depending mm -hmm. on the area of exposure and the, the process or the people. We can work on gathering that and, and work with the internal auditor to, to approach it from that yeah, okay. my perspective. Okay, thank you. Any other questions or, or comments? Any more questions? I, I, I personally, you know, because there, there is a, a motion for, you know, for action, uh, I had a couple of days to look at it and go over it, and, and there's still a lot to understand in my case, you know. Uh, uh, and and I think I'd feel more comfortable if, if we had maybe a little, uh, another, I, I didn't get the workshop, a little more workshop or, or something to that extent. That's my opinion because, uh, I mean, this is, we want to set up something that's going to last a long time and that's going to be solid. And, and this is why we're working on it. But there's there's a lot of questions like Mr. Padillas had. And, and, you know, I think we're going in the right direction. We just want to make sure that, that the right thing's done. The, the, the document itself it just establishes the, the standards and the procedures and how the, and it goes very detailed on how uh, the, the, the document itself has to look like, what's to need to be included. And I think what Mr. Farias is asking more of an implementation. So if the board to, were to pass this, we could also have a workshop to get some direction from, from, the, from the board, and then the staff would also look at the, at the risk, and then we could also present an impl implementation plan um, as we move forward. 
So if the board would pass this, then we could go into implementation, and then we could get direction on how to implement it. But this is more of the how-to. One thing we discussed during the conversation <coughs> was that uh, you all brought an outside uh, consultant mm -hmm. to help you out. But he was here for a couple of days, three days, four days? One, one day. One day. And taught us how to go, uh, how to approach it. My suggestion was that maybe you could hire him for a number of days, you know, but he would come in and give you a little more guidance. You know, that, that was my, my suggestion. Well, if the, if the board would like, maybe we set up a workshop on the on implementation that would include the, the consultant and would also include uh, the uh, uh, Mr. Farias's concern on selecting which uh, how we should start and implement the, the, the program. Any other questions? You do have a question? This is an action. It's an action. The the policy that was passed out to the board in the packet is 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 um, does not in incorporate the changes that the committee requested on Friday. That's right. 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 On page eight, we underlined the sections that were added based on, on, on the board, uh, the committee members' request. And the board will approve all policies and any policy procedure document. Oh, it's over here. It's in the handout. It's in the handout. And uh, any procedure that is passed by executive management will be, uh, will be presented to the, to, uh, the board will get a copy of that. So the board will be aware of every, everything that's going on. For approval. For approval. Excellent job on this document. I just like to say that I, as part of the integrity, support this, and like we just say, it's a how to, how to, how to, how to write it out, how to format it, how to do the schematics and, and, and outlining, and then the protocols for hearing <coughs> approvals and adoption. So uh, I, I would recommend approval, but then if there are changes, we can always revise it. But there's a procedure. For right. the I like what you said about the uh, uh, the implementation. Separate that. Yes, make a motion that have a workshop. On the implementation. And that includes the, the new policy that or the new, uh, yeah, the one that the board will be approving is the one that's drafted uh, today, that has today's date. Okay, motion. Mr. Vasquez, thank you, Mr. Farias. Uh, any questions, discussion? No. All in favor? The motion is to approve the, the policies that were handed out at the meeting that include the amendments requested by the audit and that in addition to uh, passing that, the going forward there be a Workshop, workshop when when it's time to implement so the implementation workshop. Mm -hmm. yes. That was that was that's the motion. motion. That's motion. Mr. Roscoe, thank you, Mr. Farias. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Item. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Item 11. Consideration of approval of the resolution by the Brownsville UB to acknowledge and move to extend great appreciation and support the commercial off-site project by Space Exploration Technology Corporation. Mr. Bruzier. Chairman, members of the board, uh, Jason Hiltz has requested this resolution. There was a copy in your, your packet. So made a couple of minor modifications to that. Uh, and, uh, uh, we had a United Brownsville today on the SpaceX project. There's a public hearing tomorrow night at the iTech Center. There's a lot of support of the community for Here's for this project to go out at Boca Chica. And uh, the other thing we changed, we, the first paragraph, we made modified that a little bit. Other than that, and the date is the same as what was in your packet. And we recommend approval. Is there any questions? I make a motion to approve. Motion of Mr. Vasquez, second. second. Mr. Nakara. To approve the uh, sure. handout. The staff uh, recommendations. Yeah. The handout. Resolution. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. <coughs> Item 12, 
consideration and approval of amendment number seven for the fiscal year 2012 capital improvement plan budget. Mr. Garcia. Yes, uh, with this amendment, uh, we are providing funding for the uh, balance of the Resaca equipment uh, that was acted on earlier. The, the total request uh, was for uh, $5,460,000, of which we already have $2 million. So this, this budget amendment, uh, and we'll have to revise it, was presented uh, with the agenda at $3,425,000. It should be now $3,461,000. Uh, that, uh, along with the two million, will complete the funding for the uh, equipment purchases under item 10. Uh, this this uh, amendment is being funded with a current year surplus. I reported earlier we had six million. We're tapping into that six million at this point to, to accomplish this or to support this. Uh, year to date, since October, we have done, as I mentioned, seven amendments, including this one, for a total of 15,370,855 out of prior year surplus and now current year surplus combined. So uh, this is an action item that will uh, amend the CIP budget. I, like uh, I would uh, make a motion to accept the staff recommendation for the approval of the CIP amendment number seven for an amount not to exceed $3.465 million. No, 3.461. 3,461,000. We're adding 36,000 based on the uh, revised estimates. Motion is through. Yes, yes, thank you, Mr. Vasquez. Uh, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Garcia. And we have consent items. Is there any questions on the consent items? Anything anybody wants to propose? My request is uh, at just on number uh, what number six. I have number six. I don't know what's number two. I have one. Okay, we're gonna have number six. Six. And what is it? Five. I have five, six, two, three. I'm gonna go through all. Nobody's going home. <laughs> no uh, we're going to with bold items two, three, five, and six. And uh, we vote, we can vote on the rest of them. On one, four, and seven. On one, four, and seven, on the uh, consent items. I move that we approve uh, consent items one, second, four, and seven. Uh, so I move by Mr. Bahia, second, uh, Mr. Nakara. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Item number two. Consideration approval of contract renewal for the annual safety shoe program. Uh, somebody had a question on that one. Yes, sir. There's going to be an increase on this uh, third year, right? There is an increase. It's mostly going to affect the employees and a few with a PUV. A 5% five, a five, a five increase? Yes. How much will it affect the employees? Sorry? 5%? 5%. Uh, and you from what? The discount is still 17%. It's the price of the boot. And PUV pays the 150 that they're allowed to the employee. So if anything is over the 150, the employee pays that difference. <laughs> uh, there's a spreadsheet attached that has the, the different prices, the current price, and previously what the employee would pay, and then the new price. So if you look at item, the third one down, the price increase, the employee cost would be 32, so their price increase is $8 more that they would pay this year than they paid last year. On the, uh, we had a three-year contract with them, and this was a, the third and final year, it says? Yes. Uh, now, with them increasing the rate, I mean, does that break our contract with them, or how does that work? No, each year, that's how we bring it back to you all. Each year, we ask them if they want to extend it, and they say yes, they'll extend it, but there is a price increase, and so it's up to you all to decide if you want to go with that increase, or? Sure, if we want to go for a bid. Yes. 
Special. They have electrical protection for the electric. We have some that are waterproof. We have, uh, uh, like for the meter readers, we have uh, uh, puncture resistant soles. So they are specialized depending on the positions. There was a hazard analysis done, and each position was looked at as to what hazard safety hazards they encounter. So these boots are all um, have special. Uh, safety uh, uh, features in them. Have we had any foot injuries? Uh, no. <laughs> well, we did a presentation on workers' comp. I don't think you want to hear that. Comments, questions, or if you'd like me to go through the um, the item itself. Yes. Well, uh, yes, please do. Uh, my concern was the reason I asked this. Uh, my concern is again, you know, Tim vendors only one response. You know, again, I stress this is their job as far as getting vendors to you know go out there and have them hit. You know, more than one that you know gives an option three, four, five. Uh, the <coughs> thing is, uh, they went up to the server, right? Uh, from four forty six hundred dollars to ten thousand nine hundred. Actually, that's a out of date uh, cost. Uh, we actually did purchase some uh, poles in uh, late 2009. For how much? Uh, it was a total of $8,500 per unit. Per unit? Per unit, yes, sir. Because well, I was referring to this 2007 and 4,600 compared to right now, 10,900. Uh, I believe Ms. Gomez gave that presentation right now. We, we went out for uh, some. Grants, yes, or holes and so yes, sir. Mm -hmm. or, or this that much of an emergency? Could we wait on this poll for anyone to get those grants and just buy those poles for the grants? Or just having to go out there and pay them the and which it will be our money, but still, right? You know, uh, it's for inventory, so yeah. you know, poles usually last quite a bit of time, yes. So. Let me just give you some background on this. Um, these poles are actually for uh, a different type of priority uh, concrete pole, where the grants were more um, targeted for high priority uh, units. So uh, 
our, our lines are designated differently, and these are for the lower type priority um, installations. But they're for inventory, right? They will be installed immediately. Once we receive them, there will be a, there's a project ready for these, these type bolts. They will, they will not be sitting on the shelf, that's, uh, that's for sure. Yes, go ahead. Just wanted to, to stress the point that uh, Eli made, that these are going to be going into immediate use. Uh, we do still have those grant applications out there. Uh, those are going to be the ones that we, that we listed as critical structures are, are different kind of construction. They're not just fun, but, but they're a lot uh, more rigid in their construction to withstand the uh, dead end of a conductor or the turn of a conductor. Uh, those, those, again, stand uh, as presented for, for grant funding. But these, in this case, are needed for immediate use. So I understand your, your request to, to, to hold off, but in this case, in the government says here for inventory, and it doesn't say for immediate use as far as they're, they're going into inventory, but they will be assigned to two projects as soon as they come into inventory. They, they, they don't get issued straight to the job, they get issued to inventory, and then from inventory are issued to the job. That's or correct. So we, well, from, from, you know, my concern again is you know, that as far as the cost of the other concern is one bit. Personally, I would make the motion to table it and we bid it out and see what we get. Okay. On the grant application, I just want to mention that uh, we did have, I believe, uh, GIS actually identify the specific poles that were you know, being uh, uh, considered for replacement under that grant fund. So those are kind of like spoken for based on their location. Uh, so <coughs> You know, again, uh, my motion would be to table it and see what we go out there and see what we get. Uh, I just wanted to let you know, we do send out an acknowledgement page with our bids, and they responded back. The reason why they did not send to a bid was because they don't make 90-foot poles. The largest they make is 70. So I have five responses here that told me they don't make that type of pole. And then I do have border states that said they were going to submit, but they didn't. So I, I don't know why they didn't submit, maybe because they couldn't. So how many do you have that were to submit that they didn't? One, one said that he would submit a uh, border state, and he did not submit a bid. And then I have others here that said no, because they don't produce that length of no. pole. They make only up to 70 feet. So you have six other ones? Then? Yes, I have five other ones here five that other, say oh. the same thing. Then, then we can't use a 70 foot. No, not not for these particular. Yeah, yeah. yeah they're, they're, we're requesting what we need, sir. Let me just make one other point. Um, in that, I got. I guess it's somewhat, you know, some background. In that uh, survey that we took for the grants, the, the prices are in line with what they gave us for lots of polls that were ordered. So, I mean, I don't anticipate there being much change moving forward. But, you know, it, it's up to the board and what you all decide. The grant was one issue that stuck to me right now when Ms. Gomez was there. Yes. Mm -hmm. Regardless of that, you know, my concern is the bids, you know. Sure. You yeah. know, again, you know, just one bid. I mean, you know, I've stressed it every, uh, several times, you know, give us two or three bids, four bids, you know, possible. And that's one thing, you know, my concern. Uh, okay. So I will move the table because of the board bid, you know, and uh, I know you. Uh, you know, and then I saw inventory, so I thought you were going to have them there as right. inventory. Now you tell me, you know, they're, you're going to place them out there. I'm, I'm going with what I have right here in front of me. So what I have right here in front of me is one bid, stages for inventory. You know, so we we we, we, we bring to the board whatever we can. So if, if we have one bid, then the, the thing we need to do now is reject and not table. If we're going to reopen it, because Tabling that one bit, okay, we, need to close, we need to close the process with you, even if it's just one bit, and then we open it. Okay, well, motion on the motion. My motion then would be to, uh, to reject. reject and re bid it and, and uh, see if we can come back in two, three, four bits. That's my motion. Motion, Mr. Nakata, you have a second? Second. Second, Mr. Vasquez. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Item number five. <coughs> Item number five, consideration approval to award the annual supply of liquid aluminum based water treatment by Who had a question on this one? Mr. Garcia. The budget. 
question is, is that is it normally our policy to put million dollar bids on decisions on consent agenda items? This is an item. I put it up. No, 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 I understand. I'm just saying yeah, it wasn't something that was because it's a routine item, but considering the amount, it will take that into consideration as they will work. You set a number, we'll bring it to the board. Okay. I mean, but it's a routine item, a large item for the year, but I put it out there, not staff. No, it's fine. And I, I think we had a conversation about the yeah. going back to the last meeting. It's just uh, a million dollar item deserves some sure. uh, some attention. Uh, the conversation was about what? About a million dollar item on the well, the amount, but the reasoning for you putting on consent item is just a routine item. It's a straightforward item, and it is a large for the year, but I mean, there's nothing out of the ordinary about it for chemicals. I, I, I would have a question for you. How many pounds were utilized last year? Um, three, three million seven hundred and seventy-eight thousand pounds. This year, three thousand three hundred. Oh, that's year. Three thousand three hundred was last year. Three million. Three million. Three hundred thousand. Oh, and so we're estimating three million seven hundred. No more. Uh -huh. No more. Okay. But it's at a lower cost. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? So, on this particular item, I mean, we followed the request for proposal, and it just came in at the. Yeah. Yeah, this is the lowest bid. I make motion. Motion is to get out a staff recommendation. Second. Second to Raskis. Any discussion? No. Uh, <coughs> falling asleep. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, 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 yes, I'm voting. No, oh, all in favor? <laughs> all right. Motion carries. <laughs> I was falling asleep. So, so that's all kind of those closing aside. <laughs> Uh, item number six, consideration of approval of this award for restoration of underground half mount equipment and decorative and non-decorative street light uh, holes. I, I just, I'm curious on this company, uh, Utility Restoration Services. I, I, uh, I'm not familiar with this company. Can you give me some information on that? Or, or Manuela Redondo, Utility Restoration Services uh, has been doing for us like three years of work in uh, providing restoration of pad mounted equipment. For example, in subdivisions, whenever we have a single page mass summer that is corroded, that is corroding, they go, they sand it, they paint it, they do the restoration. And then they also do restoration on some street lights. One of the major projects they, they did was at the Palm Boulevard, Palm Boulevard. That, it was beginning of the year. So they restored all the lights that were on Palm Boulevard. I don't know if you noticed they started looking a little prettier, black. Yeah. <laughs> so they, they were there. Oh, okay. Well, that, that's the only question I had because I've seen them in different neighborhoods and messing with our boxes and stuff. I'm like, who's that? Yeah. <laughs> why, why only for six months? Not, why not for a year? Usually they, they will um, deplete the funds within six months. This is the second time we have gone for bids and, and usually for the, the, the contract will last only for six months. They have like four crews working or five around the city. So, I mean, it just gets reviewed at the same terms and conditions or they, they up the price. This went out to 10 members and also they It goes out again. But it says here that they have the option to renew contracts provided for a satisfaction. Uh, I think that's Again, they're, they're the only one that was bonded and they were bonded by an extension. Yeah, that's that's interesting still, you know, because you got supposedly the, you know, the economy's bad, people are looking for work and we only have one responding. You know, we got 10 companies now. So is this correct? The only advertise on the 18th and the 25th, or 18th and 25th? No, we advertise twice. Only twice. 18th and 25th. Is that what we do with everybody? That's what we do? There's actually other company that you know, that are, that's awesome. They are interested and they do a similar job, but the only thing is that they don't do a restoration of, of poles, the streetlights. 
So they, they're just back up. They've come to the pre and they've been there with us, and when it comes time to turn in a bit, they back out and they don't turn away anymore. I think a lot of this may be because they're doing it online, right? Like they, the transformers, a lot of the companies that do transformer repairs, they'll do the repair with the transformer taking it to their location, not while it's on the ground there. Oh, well, not there directly. Right. Yeah, that's what I've seen them doing is restoring uh, the transformers. Yes. But the underground, the underground. Maybe we need to do a survey of people that are not bidding and ask them why they're not bidding. So I guess the board can feel more satisfied that you know, y'all are doing your job, but for some reason they're backing out. Or yeah, maybe we just need to learn why people well, the, are not bidding. Well, that form bidding. that I told you right now, that acknowledgement <laughs> form, it gives you a reason there why they are or not. They are going to respond or they're not going to respond, and we have a space for them to submit why they're not responding. And we can include that if you'd like. I, I was just going to say, yeah. 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 Okay, sure. Yeah, that'd be good. And, and the whole idea is we're about, you know, saving money and opportunities for everybody in different businesses. Uh, so is there a motion? Oh. So there are motion, uh, staff's recommendation to approve the board. Motion by Mr. Padian. Second. Second, Mr. Vasquez. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Is there a motion to adjourn? There's a motion. Public, Mr. Public. Anybody have anything to say? No. 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 No.